This tutorial series is for IC2 Experimental, which is the current IC2 version, being used on FTB Monster. This is part 3 of the Industrial Craft 2 Experimental version tutorial series. Alright guys, so last time we covered uh, a lot of nuclear reactor stuff, mainly, as well as some more advanced machines. Um, and this time I want to talk about UU Matter Production. Okay, so this is a little bit of a more complicated process than it used to be. Um, they now added new items that uh, are used in the process of making UU Matter. So the first one you're going to need is a mass fabricator. Um, it has, this is the machine that actually creates the UU matter. Um, it takes 10 million EU for one bucket of UU matter. Now, in the older versions, UU matter used to come as an item. Now it comes as a liquid. So, uh, 10 million EU will make one bucket or 1,000 millibuckets of UU matter. Now, scrap and scrap boxes, which we got from the recycler, can be used to reduce the time it takes to make liquid UU, which in turn also reduces the EU needed to produce one, uh, one bucket of UU matter. Now, the max power it can take is 512 EU a packet. However, it can receive, I believe, nearly infinite amount of power to go faster. So here's the interface for it right here. Um, you can see this is where you put the scrap. And this is where you have a UU matter production. Uh, you have a progress um, percentage here. And you can also take the UU matter out in floors and stuff like that. Um, and buckets, I believe, as well. As cells. You can see you have a UU matter cell. So you can take it out in cells and buckets and stuff like that. And you can also put um, different uh, upgrades in here. I don't believe overclockers work, but I do believe that uh, you can use fluid ejector upgrade. Now, the mass fabricator, fabricator is made with four glowstone, um, two advanced circuits, two advanced machine casings, and a Lapatron crystal. Um, a scrap can be turned into a scrap box using nine scrap, which is um, can also be used to speed up the mass fabricator, or has a special use. You can right-click it and it will automatically turn into a random item. Now I'm in creative, so I can just do this an infinite, infinite amount of times. You can get a bunch of different items, as you can see. I actually got a single-use battery right there, apparently. You do have a chance of getting diamonds. However, it's a really, really low chance. So, if you have a ton of scrap, feel free to use that. However, I would just use it to create UU matter, and then you use, use the UU matter to create diamonds. So the next machine you're going to need is a scanner. Now it's, the scanner scans the items and stores them in a pattern storage. So this process requires a crystal memory, which is made like so. You get five silicon, silicon dioxide and four obsidian dust. Now the silicon dioxide is made with some clay dust in a thermal centrifuge. And after you get the raw crystal memory, you have to cook it in a furnace. And then you'll get the regular crystal memory, and you can put that into the scanner um, right in the bottom right corner here. Um, so, after the scan is complete, it will destroy the item being scanned. But now you'll be able to make an infinite amount of it from UU matter and uh, energy units. So, different items take more EU to scan, and a list of scannable items you can find on the internet pretty easily. And uh, the max power it could take as well as this one is 512 EU per packet. And it is made with two iron plates, two electric motors, an advanced machine casing, two advanced circuits, illuminator, and a reinforced glass. And we'll talk a little bit about what the illuminator is in a little bit. So now you've got the pattern storage. Pattern storage doesn't require any energy. It stores the crystal memory patterns that you get from the scanner. And it um, puts them into the pattern storage to be used later on in the replicator. Now, it can automatically take patterns from a scanner that is next to it. So, as long as the scanner is one block next, like right next to the uh, pattern storage, it can automatically just take the, uh, 
the uh, um, crystal memories from the scanner. Um, so the Patter's George is created with three reinforced stone, two crystal memories, two mining lasers, an advanced circuit, and an advanced machine casing. Last machine you're going to need is a replicator. Now, the replicator creates items using UU matter. So it takes all these machines to get from the creation of UU matter to the creation of other items using the UU matter, as well as energy. Now it creates any item stored in adjacent pattern storage. Its speed can be increased using overclockers. More than six, however, will use up internal energy buffers, so you cannot use more than that. Um, and the maximum power this machine can take is 2048 EU per packet. It is made with three teleporters, two reinforced stone, two high voltage transformers, an MFE, and a reinforced uh, glass. All right, and reinforced glass is just glass as well as advanced alloys. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of a process of doing this here. Um, so basically you can see we have a progress and I'm going to grab some scrap. Am I out of energy? I am not. So the um, mass fabricator can be stopped by using a redstone signal. And so turning that off will then let it go. You can see how fast it is without the scrap. And this is using the maximum amount of energy that it can take at a time. Or uh, a decent amount of energy anyway. I'm not sure if it has a maximum. I don't think it does. As long as it doesn't exceed the amount. As, however, none of these machines will explode in experimental versions. So. But as you can see, once it reaches 100%, you're going to get 1,000 millibuckets of uh, UU matter. And so let's take some of these here. Now, the, what you do with the scanner is you put the crystal memory in the bottom right slot. And let's see, you want to make iridium ore, which is used for iridium reinforced plates, which is used for a lot of the um, more advanced tools and things in industrial craft. Now, to get iridium ore to begin with, you have to find it in the dungeon. That's the only way to find it, is in mine if the Minecraft dungeons chests. Um, it does not spawn like an ore in the world or anything like that. It can only be found in dungeons. So now what you want to do is you want to put that in this slot. You can see it's scanning. Now it's going to go through and do uh, each progress that's filled up does 1%, so once it gets to 100%, let's turn off this rain, it will then put it into this crystal memory, and it will place it in the pattern storage, and then we'll be able to use it in the replicator. So once this reaches 100%, then I'll be back. Okay guys, as you can see, it's just about done. And there we go. So now it tells you that it's going to take 22 buckets of UU matter and one, um, 1,000 EU? I don't know. I guess that means 1 million EU. Um, so now we can click delete or save. We definitely want to save that. And now it's on the crystal memory here. And sometimes, depending on the machine positioning, um, as far as east, west, north, and south, and all that goes, um, the crystal memory won't automatically go into the pattern storage. It's kind of a little bit of a bug right now. But hopefully that will be fixed in the future. So we'll just take that out ourselves and put it in there manually. And then we're going to import from crystal um, into the pattern storage. So you can see, now we have... I thought that used to uh, destroy that. I'm not sure. But anyway, now we have the iridium ore in the pattern storage right here can also export to crystal, get an empty crystal, and export a pattern to it if you want to. Um, and so, you can see it says we're going to take 22 buckets, or 22,000 millibuckets, and 1 million EU to make one of these uh, iridium ores. So, now we can go to the replicator, which tells us which pattern we want. We want the iridium ore, and then we can do single run, we can do repeat run, and we could stop it in the middle of it. 
Um, and you can see I'm just using UU Matter cells to uh, put UU Matter into the replicator. You can use uh, Buildcraft pipes or something, or thermal expansion pipes, uh, Fluidex, or just manually use UU Matter cells. Or even a fluid um, ejector can also be put into the mass fabricator to put into the replicator directly. So I'm just going to go single run. And we'll quickly show you that this is the speed at which it's running right now. It um, requires the full amount of UU matter before it will even start to pr try to process it. Um, and you can also speed it up with overclockers. Now it looks like I'm not supplying enough energy to actually keep this going right now with six of them. Or even five, really. Um, but if you're supplying enough energy, then you can use overclockers to speed up the process a little bit more. And as you can see, it's at 50% already. It doesn't take too long. It just takes a lot of energy really fast. And as well, it takes a lot of UU matter to create different items. But once it's done, it will um, output to this slot here. And you'll be able to create an infinite amount of any item that's available to be replicated using UU matter. And you can just put it on repeat run while being supplied with infinite amount of UU matter if you can do that and uh, energy as well. Then you can just have a repeat run and just keep getting in, uh, make an automated process for iridium ore. And you can see it's almost at 100%. And it is apparently it's draining the UU really slow. Alright, well, I'll be back once it's done draining this. Alright, guys. And there it is. Got an iridium ore. So, as you can see, um, drains the UU matter uh, after, after it's done with energy, usually. And you get one iridium ore for 22 buckets and 1 million EU. So, that is the basics of... Uh, creating UU matter as well as what it can be used for and if you want a full list of items that you can scan and then replicate then you can check uh, any of the industrial craft wikis should have a list about that all right guys so now we're gonna get into some more miscellaneous machines that I see two ads um, the first one is going to be the miner now the miner can take a bunch of different things as uh, input here into its inventory. And it mines ores and only blocks that are in the way of the ores that it's trying to get to. And it mines that in a certain area. Um, it stops running though, however, when it hits any liquid. And a pump can be placed next to the miner, as long as it's supplied with power, to automatically pump liquid. Um, the EU required to run a miner varies with which drill and scanners are used as input. Let's quickly turn it to Dawn. Um, but it ha has a max uh, EU input as 32 EU a packet. Okay, so you can see here's the GUI of the miner. And a couple things you're going to need is a drill, a scanner, and a mining pipes. Um, so mining pipes can be made with iron plates and a tree tap. You're going to need one for every block that the miner goes down. So around 64 is usually a good amount depending on how high up you are in the world. Now the miner itself is made with two electronic circuits, a basic machine casing, two mining pipes, and that gives you the miner. Now the miner can take an OV scanner, an OD scanner, a mining drill, or a diamond drill. Now depending on which one is used, it does different things. Now the ore, dance, the ore density scanner or the OD scanner scans a 5x5 area 
and each valuable resource adds one to the total density. The final ore density is calculated as so. Ore density equals 1000 times total density divided by total block scanned. Total block scanned is basically in this case equal to 25 times your scan height or your uh, Y level. Now each use takes 48 EU and it has a total energy storage of 10,000 EU which has 211 uses at full charge. So if I right click in this spot right here it will scan a 5x5 area around me and it says that there is an ore density of 21 in this area. Now the OV scanner or ore value scanner scans a 9x9 area and each ore has a number that represents its value. Um, the total value is calculated as so. Value of area equals 1000 times total value divided by total block scanned, which is 81 times whatever scan height or whatever um, y, val y uh, coordinate you're at. Um, each use takes 250 EU and it has the same internal energy storage of 10,000 EU as the OD scanner. So you only get 40 uses at a full charge. Now, what it means by each ore has a value, a number that represents its value, say you could have coal, which probably has a value of 1, and then you have diamonds, which has a higher value than coal, like around 5 or so, I believe. And so it takes all of those values, and in a 9x9 nine nine area, you can see we have a value of 39. Now, that means there's probably not that great things down there. Uh, there's a 43, which means there's probably some better stuff in a 9x9 nine nine area down there. Now, what these do for the uh, miner is, at default, the miner's just going to dig straight down. Okay? So, by default, let's just do this. Um, we're going to put mining pipes right here. And, um, by default, with nothing else in it, except for you're going to need a drill. Um, basically, mining drill... Uh, uses less power. You can see it's starting there. Um, but it can't break through obsidian. And the diamond drill can break through obsidian, but uses a little bit more power. So we'll put that there. You can see it's using up mining pipes for each block it mines. And it's just going to dig straight down, essentially. However, if we were to put a uh, OD scanner in there, it would dig straight down, but also look for ores in a 5x5 five five area around the miner. So now let me put it there. It's still going to dig straight down. Um, but it's going to also collect ores that are sideways as well on the sides. You can see it is outputting the resources to the nearest inventory. So you want a chest placed next to it. And the OV scanner. Uh, increases the area by nine to a nine by nine. So that is the miner, really useful for getting just the ores. And instead, unlike the quarry, it won't destroy the landscape as much. Um, the next thing we got is the advanced miner. Now the advanced miner mines a 16 by 16 block or 32 by 32 block area, and that depends on which scanner you use for the miner. You can see it has a slot for it here. If you use the OD scanner. It's going to take a 16 by 16 block area and mine it just like a quarry would. Now if you have the OV scanner, it's going to do 32 by 32. Um, it will not stop if it hits lava, and, or any other liquids for that matter. Um, the scanner and the energy buffer must be full before the miner starts. Okay, So it's got to have its energy buffer completely filled up, and the scanner has to be completely full of energy before it will start which does take around 4 million EU to fill both of those. And it can accept upgrades. So you can see the other left slot here. It can accept upgrades, which is really nice. Um, it also shows remaining levels to mine. So you can see right now it's saying there's 236 levels because we're at wide 236. And it would keep going down and show you where uh, it's at and how much more it's got left to go. Um, you can also whitelist and blacklist items, and it has a max EU uh, packet of 128. So you can choose to set it to whitelist mode, which means it only allows these items in, or blacklist mode, which means it doesn't allow these items to be uh, 
mined. So that means you can um, put items in these slots here. So you don't want it to mine diamonds or redstone or lapis because you have a fortune pickaxe. Put those ores in there and uh, switch it to blacklist and you should be good. I'm, it might be to where you have to use the actual items like a diamond instead of a diamond ore. And I think that will work as well. Alright, so advanced miner is made with four advanced alloys, two regular miners, an MFE, teleporter, and an advanced machine casing. Um, as you can see, I just had this in here to show you that it does fit in there. And now we're going to go see, quickly see the advanced miner in action. Okay guys, here is a miner setup here, advanced miner setup. It's going to require a redstone signal, so you're going to need a lever or redstone torch. Um, and you can see it's got full power, and full power in the OV scanner. You're also going to need some kind of storage next to the miner, or some kind of pipe system. Um, so the one thing I wanted to note was that it seems like in the tooltips it's saying the OV scanner has 1 million EU internal storage, and the OD scanner has 100,000 instead of 10,000 that I saw on the most recent I could find on the wiki. So I guess that's changed recently. Um, this can now hold 1 million, and the OD scanner can now hold 100,000 EU, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And you can see it's starting to mine over here. And it's placing the dirt in the chest next to it. And it's going to do that in a 32 by 32 area around the miner, which means you're basically going to get a 33 by 33 area because the miner um, block, it doesn't count that for some reason. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off because I don't want to destroy the whole world. But that's basically the gist of how the miner works. It's pretty close to the quarry. Um, possibly not as fast. Uh, it depends on how much power you give the quarry and stuff like that. Um, however, it's really nice and it's really helpful. And that's the advanced miner. Okay guys, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the Tesla coil. Um, the Tesla coil kills any mobs or players in a four block radius. So I've marked that out in gold here. So if I stand right here, uh, I'll be fine. But if I stand right here, I'll be dead. Um, it's got an internal storage of 5,000 EU, and it requires a redstone signal to be active. While active, it will drain two energy units per tick. It will use more energy units when a mob is killed, however. Um, it will t penetrate blocks and walls, so if you have like a wall here and you stand behind right here, it's still going to kill you. It's in the radius, it's still going to kill you. Um, it's got a max power of 128 EU per packet. It's made with two iron item casings, an electronic circuit, an MV transformer, and five redstone. And I've got some creeper eggs here. Let's quickly turn it to uh, hard difficulty. And we'll go ahead and turn this on. Now, if I was in here and not in creative mode, I would be dead. As you can see, I'm powering it right here. So let's put some creepers down. And you can see it just one-shots creepers. And it kills them quickly. So this can be really helpful for if you're setting up a mob trap, um, as long as you don't get too close, because if you get too close, then you're dead as well. Um, let's grab this real quick. So now let's quickly check out the teleporter. Now teleporters um, can teleport players and mobs from one teleporter to another, as long as they're in the same dimension. They do cost EU for each teleport, and it varies depending on your weight and distance. So the weight is determined, is calculated with, uh, from armor, um, items in your inventory, and what if it's a player, a mob, or a passive mob. Um, if you want the exact calculations of weight and all that, you can go check the wiki, but it's pretty extensive, so I won't be able to cover it here. Um, but basically, what you need to know is first, 
you're going to need a frequency transmitter, which is an electronic circuit and a copper cable. And you're going to need it for the recipe, but you're also going to need an extra one. So you're going to want three of these, because you've got to make two teleporters, as well as having one left over. So it's going to take four advanced circuits, one of those frequency transmitters, a diamond, two glass fiber cable, and an advanced machine casing. Alright, now the frequency transmitter, um, what you do with that, is first you want to set up two teleporters, and you want to give them each power. Okay? Now you're going to need a redstone signal. I would I would uh, suggest using the button instead of a lever. Um, but you're going to need something to activate it. Now to link up teleporters, you're going to need to right click on one and then right click on the second one. So you'll have to be able to, if you want to teleport long distance, you'll have to first uh, travel that distance on foot to link up the teleporters. But then you can travel back by using... Um, the teleporters themselves. So now you just stand on top of the teleporter, press a redstone signal, or activate the redstone signal, and you'll go to the other teleporter that it's linked up to. Now you can see we have one million here, and it, now we have uh, quite a substantial amount less. So it does take a lot for just this little um, distance and I have no armor or any items in my inventory so I don't weigh very much and it already costs a lot of EU so it can be very expensive however it's really nice for fast travel all right so the last machine we're going to talk about in this part is the terraformer now the terraformer changes the terrain around it in an 8 by 8 chunk area and if you don't know Minecraft runs off of chunks and each chunk is 16 by 16 blocks and so you have an 8 by 8 chunk area that the terraformer will change the terrain. Um, its power requirement works like the Buildcraft Quarry. So the more power, the faster it will run. It requires a TFBP to run. We'll talk about the different TFBPs in a second. Um, the max power is 512 EU, a packet. And it's made with 1 TFBP, 4 glowstone dust, three dirt and an advanced machine casing all right um, it doesn't have an interface so you can't open the GUI or anything like that um, however to make a TFBP you need electronic circuit an advanced circuit and two redstone now there's a bunch of different things the terraformer can do to the terrain and doing um, to do to uh, decide which one you want you will have to uh, make different types of TFBPs so, the first one is the irrigation TFBP, which turns sand to dirt and then dirt to grass. And it will rarely spawn water on areas that are below the terraformer. So, it will fill in um, different areas that are lower than the terraformer with water on rare occasions. It also spawns saplings, wheat, and sugarcane which sugarcane grows faster and above its three block limit when spawned with the terraformer. Then you just make that with a TFBP and four water buckets. Now the next one is the cultivation TFBP, which is made from four seeds and a TFBP empty. Um, and that replaces sand with dirt, dirt to grass, and will randomly create all kinds of plant life. So it'll basically just make tons of flowers and wheat and saplings and it replaces any sand with dirt and that dirt eventually turns to grass to make the area pretty uh, cool looking. Now the next one is the chilling TFPP. That takes four snowballs and a default TFPP empty and it makes snow and snow blocks appear as well as freezes any water in the area. Next one is the flatification TFPP. It takes four dirt. That removes all natural blocks from the levels below the, or above the terraformer and fills in surface layers below the terraformer. So basically flattens out the terrain in a 8x8 um, eight eight block area. Or 8x8 eight eight chunk area, sorry. Um, and it does not remove mushrooms or snow. That's the only blocks it won't remove. Um, not snow blocks, but actual the snow that's on top of uh, dirt. The next one is the desertification, which requires four sand. 
Now, that melts ice and snow and destroys plants. And it replaces dirt with sand. And it can also cause forest fires. So that's a dangerous one, but hey, you can make a desert out of it. Don't know why you'd want that, but if you do, then there you go. The last one is the mushroom. And that takes four mycelium and four mushrooms around a TFBP empty. And that will change the current biome into a mushroom biome. And it will also change dirt and grass into mycelium. And it will also plant mushrooms and giant mushrooms. So that's the terraformer, and I'm going to go quickly show you one that's being used. Alright guys, so here's a terraformer. You can see I've got four MFSUs surrounding the terraformer to give it a, quite a bit of power. And um, we're going to use the TFBP chilling, which is going to turn water into ice. And it's also going to create some snow in an 8x8 chunk area. So the way you install a uh, TFBP is by right clicking the terraformer. And you can see with this much power it is quickly making this a snow biome. And that works out quite nicely. You can see the area in which it's uh, terraforming. It's getting all the way back there. And it's freezing the uh, water. Now breaking it will lose the TFBP. However, if you um, use a wrench on it, you'll get the TFBP pack or back as well as the uh, terraformer. Okay, guys, so that's terraformer is going to be the last of this part. Um, we covered quite a bit today, and tomorrow will be, uh, or the next part will be wrapping up. I do believe have a couple more things to talk about. Um, some more miscellaneous machines that do different cool stuff, as well as some different uh, advanced tools and armor that IC2 adds, and talking a little bit about some agriculture stuff that you can do. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like. It helps out a lot. And leave a comment in the comment section to tell me what mod you want me to spotlight next. And uh, subscribe to my channel to be notified when I upload more videos like this. And I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time.